Hey there, this is Neil Davis from Digital Cloud Training. In this series of short videos, I'm going to walk you through some practice exam questions from my AWS Certified Developer Associate Practice Exam course. And what I'm going to do is walk you through my thought process. So how do I go about working out which answer or answers are correct? And how do I work out which answers are definitely incorrect? And I've been doing IT examinations for over 20 years, so I've got quite a bit of experience and I want to try and use that to sort of teach you a few techniques so that when you go and sit your exam, you've got a much greater chance of success. So I hope you find it valuable. See you in the videos. So this question says a developer needs to be notified by email when a new object is uploaded to a specific S3 bucket. What is the easiest way for the developer to enable these notifications? So always notice these things where it says easiest, best, simplest, most cost effective. You've got to make sure you always take note of these because that might indicate to you that there are multiple ways in this example of doing something and you need the easiest way. There could be multiple ways of doing something and you need the lowest cost option. So you've got to make sure you choose the right one because there can be multiple correct answers. So in this case, the developer needs to be notified when an object's uploaded to an S3 bucket. Now, hopefully you've done this before in some labs. It's quite a straightforward exercise to configure. And straight away, it's pushing me towards saying SNS topic. Why? Because, well, firstly, we've got notification mentioned here by email. Now, when we think about notifications, that's usually going to push us to an SNS topic. SQSQ is another option here. So another thing is to notice sometimes a pattern in the answers. So here I can see that these three answers are all identical up to this point here where it says events. And then it changes. So this one's an SNS topic, SQSQ, Lambda function. So as long as this bit here sounds correct, so add an event to an S3 bucket for put and post events. Well, that's what you would do if you were uploading an object. That would be uh, the HTTP method put or post. So that sounds correct. And then I could choose between one of these three. Now, before I do that, let's just exclude this one. Is this definitely an incorrect answer? So this is about creating events and using step functions. Well, step functions isn't about notification by email. That's a state machine for coordinating workflows. So that leaves me with Lambda, SQS, and SNS. Now, remember, SNS is about notifications, and it definitely sends via multiple delivery mechanisms, including email. With SQS, I'm normally thinking of the terminology being messages, not notifications, and certainly not email. And then you've got Lambda function. Well, of course, you can do a lot of a Lambda function, but I wouldn't want to program a Lambda function to notify someone by email when I've got an SNS topic that can do it. So the easiest way here for sure is going to be an SNS topic. So I'm happy with that. Let's click on check. And sure enough, that is the correct answer. And here we've got the explanation. And it's showing me an image where we can see a configuration. So we've got put and post. We could put in a prefix and a suffix. And then we can send to an SNS topic. And now with this very simple configuration in place, every time someone uploads an object to the bucket, it's going to go and trigger this SNS topic and they're going to receive an email with some information about the upload. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's click on next. And question eight states that a company currently runs a number of legacy automated batch processes for system update management and operational activities. The company are looking to refactor these processes and require a service that can coordinate multiple services into serverless workflows. So if you listen to the last one, actually the last question gave you a clue as to what the correct answer should be. So let's look at, let's break this down a bit. Firstly, we've got legacy automated batch processes. So that makes me think that it's some kind of, you know, multiple pieces of batch processes. They're probably talking to each other and they're doing some system update management and operational activities. I mean, we don't care too much about what they're doing, but we know that they're legacy automated batch processes and we're trying to refactor them here. So we're probably migrating them potentially from outside the cloud into the cloud. So what we need is a service that can coordinate multiple services, AWS services, into serverless workflows. And straight away, I'm thinking, well, workflows does make me think about Amazon SWF because that's the 
Amazon simple workflow service. But the other service it makes me think of is step functions. And serverless definitely pushes me to step functions. So SWF is not something that I'm going to think of for serverless workflows. You want to think of SWF for things like human enabled workflows. So think about in Amazon fulfillment centers, sending out physical goods, someone picks up an item from a conveyor belt and they have to stamp it or they have to scan it into a system. So it actually goes from being on an automated process, a machine to a human doing something and then back into a system again. And that's what SWF is good for. So step function sounds like the correct answer. Now, what about Lambda? Well, Lambda is an option here because you can certainly migrate and you know your step functions could be a series of Lambda functions that are being coordinated. But what about just using Lambda without step functions? Well, then you could have each of your batch processes as a function in Lambda and they could potentially be sort of calling each other. So a, 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 an AWS Lambda function can initiate another AWS Lambda function. But is that the most suitable service? I think step functions is more suitable because this is exactly what its use case is for. So this is exactly the purpose of step functions is for this type of use case. So let's choose step functions. Oh, I didn't cover batch. So let's just look at batch. So what is batch? So batch is about running computing jobs on EC2. So it's not serverless. It uses EC2. And it's not really going to be what we want to use here for migrating legacy batch processes into a serverless workflow. So I think it's got to be step functions. Let's check. So there we go. The answer is correct. And you can see an example here of a serverless workflow. So you can build a visual workflow in step functions. So you can actually see these steps and they might each be calling a Lambda function and running that code. And then each of these will then sort of go off and you've, you've built this kind of logical flow. And in step functions, you can actually watch this go from gray to green as it goes through or red if it fails.